Hey, come sit with me. Who do we got here? We got uh, Jacob Elordi on this. Uh, this plan is fake. It says, please do, please do not zoom without headphones. Oh, shit. Go on and do what I want to do. What is that? That's my phone. Someone's ringing. Isn't that crazy? I need to go. I think I, oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Hello? Where are you? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, dude, please. Bye. Sit in a chair. Smile. My internal monologue right now. I mean, I guess. I don't really know. It's really like. It's kind of peaceful, but it's kind of also like. Bad right now. You know, like shit not always bad, but. I'm trying to balance. Um. And basically, music. Like. I make music and I find a way to like try to connect my life to my music and that's really much, yeah, that's really about it. How do I want to connect to life? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to connect to life through my music, you know? I'm trying to actually like connect a lot of people to my music and have like a connection to also people, but you know, as an artist. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest inspiration right now? Bro. Probably the like... The whole rock scene and punk scene. Like I feel like it's very like... It's raw. It's like what you actually want to see. And it's what is actually going on in the world. Yeah. So Put it in the chair. What's a topic that you haven't written a song about that you A topic... Probably about... F the feeling of like internal anger and feeling like suppressed. Yeah. I feel like that's one of my top like written shit right now. Yeah. For real. Can you like talk about that feeling of it? It's really like like a bunch of emotions. I can't really explain it. It's more like a in the moment feeling, you know? Like you don't really know when anger is about to happen. It just happens and then it just piles up, piles up. You know? It depends on how you hang like handle it. Some people can handle it, some people can't. Some people bottle it. You know? Till you reach your limit, that's when you like let go. Yeah. Yeah. I try to let it go through music. I feel like it's like a, like another escape. You know, like instead of doing like other like you know other shit, I feel like it's an escape from that. Yeah. You can find it. There's always an escape. There's always an allow something to distract it. There's always something. You just gotta like find it. But everybody's good at something. Everybody's good at something. I believe that. So if someone was watching this right now and they didn't know what they were good at, and um, they they want to find out what they're good at, what would your advice be? I'd be like, try everything. Just try everything. Like I didn't know what I was doing. In the beginning, music really wasn't my first thing I was doing. I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do. But, you know, I had inspiration from other artists and it was like a sense of uh, like a escape, you know? So like I connected to it most. I hopped on it. All right. I like that. When you connect to other people, it, it helps the process. You guys learn, you know, each other. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Some people like that competition, but that, that's not healthy. Nah. Especially since we're all trying to do the same thing, right? Everybody got their own idea. Like, you know, like, it's going to take time. You know, you could probably have inspiration from someone. But you could also find, like, after a while, 
you find in yourself while like you have that inspiration so like it'll come eventually you know you just gotta keep going don't give up don't ever give up on that shit Nah, I mean, it's probably gonna be around the same genre. I do rock, but like, yeah, rock, trap, metal. But I don't really think it's gonna change. I try to switch up like styles and stuff like that. Most I'll probably do is like grunge. But yeah, that's about it. So how can we find you? Um, Instagram, Flacco Flacco, two zeros, or Die at Night. Die at Night is my artist name. And yeah. Do you want to talk about the statement or just free yourself? Yo, do what you want in life, bro. Don't be scared, bro. If somebody tell you it's wrong, they jealous. I don't give a fuck. Because... I learned that the hard way. Bro, this is my drink. I learned this the hard way. Yeah, I thought like I was supposed to be doing something else. And I feel actually at peace doing this, which is music. Bro, it just feels good, you know? To do something you want to do. It feels freeing. Exactly like the statement. Like, Don't confine yourself to just like what people say. Maybe what your parents say. Sometimes your parents are right, but not all the time, you know, not all the time. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'm PMSing, and I really want chocolate. That is, that's what I'm looking for right now. And they're closed, so. Yeah. Is that a camera god? Okay. I'm Crystal. I'm 27. Uh, my birthday just passed, so thank you. That's been on my mind. I think a lot about, like, what life will be like, and I think that involves a lot of, like, rest and care and what that looks like within my community and friendships. Anxiety? Oh, 100% anxiety. What do you do? I can talk about my anxiety. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, this is amazing. I love it. See, I need the guidance. Okay, yes. I have anxiety and anxious moments. So I think when I am anxious, I try to breathe. And like I do this special breathing where you like, let me do it to think about it. So like I kind of hold for eight seconds, like inhale for eight, hold it for like four, and then exhale for eight. It's like a long time, but it calms me down. And I think it brings me back to the present because if you can't breathe, you know, like I think I do my worst work when I'm not breathing well. Yes, my worst work when I'm not breathing well. Um, by that I mean like, you know when you're like rushing somewhere, huffing, puffing, and not breathing? Not good. Can't do it. Can't function like that. Uh, when my breathing's like, like strained, I also have asthma, so I can't do that shit. I have an inhaler. That calms me down. So, yeah. Anxiety's real. My friend makes like a weed tincture, I take that sometimes. I just like picture myself sometimes in like a little like bubble with like glitter. And one of my friends gave me a really good visualization technique to pretend you're in like a gold little glitter bubble and nothing can harm you. And that is really it. Like we could all be in the bubble. The bubble could be like all of us. I see it. Wow, you know? I feel it. Like a little like bubble. Just like warm lights, comfort. I was just saying these things. The visualization techniques definitely help. Focusing on breathing really helps because I think when I'm anxious, I feel like very not grounded in reality and what's going on right now. So breathing helps bring me to the present moment. And it kind of just like clears the anxiety. 
Hello, microphone. How are you, microphone? My mind, uh, two things. One is just uh, mundane tasks that need to be done. More importantly, meaning how to obtain meaning in existence and be of use in the very near future. And uh, working to uh, exactly find, get the answer to those questions. What is the word meaning? I need a moment to think how to answer. The f feeling of fulfillment that you're doing something that 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 is not designed uh, for enrichment or for monetary gains, but is designed for uh, the benefit of other entities besides me, something like that. Other human beings, yeah. or other or other living organisms. No aliens. Uh, could be aliens, as long as it's not just. I, I, all all I can say is that I'm absolutely. The number one fear is absolute meaningless existence, driven by this this concept of family, kids, car, uh, and a nice toaster and uh, and two acres of land is truly a fucking nightmare that I am scared of. Of if that's the purpose of existence, then that truly is meaningless. So how to avoid having that uh, acquisition of material goods as the main purpose of existence. So, so why is that uh, I, I have not ever uh, come, uh, been in a situation where, from, except maybe for longer than a few minutes or maybe an hour, where I felt happy from uh, up, having obtained a physical possession or, even, or any monetary compensation. I have, however, f felt enormous satisfaction of having created something, but not because it came with the result of some sort of financial benefit. So it's when the end goal is, uh, if the end goal is acquisition of monetary goods or physical items or some sort of material, Goods, uh, it frightens the shit out of me because that is truly unsatisfying, as I have experienced. So, how to make sure that that's not the uh, the purpose of existence? So do you think there's an actual purpose? Uh, uh, I think for most people not, and I th and from experience, from just having talked to many senior citizens, it's uh, I. I Maybe family, children, I don't know, For but uh, I think the most satisfying is having had created something, design created, where you leave behind you some sort of, uh, something you created, not, not uh, you know, and, and when I mean created, doesn't mean artwork could be engineered, some new technology or... Uh, design, uh, written a new play or composed uh, in, uh, something or like exactly what you're doing uh, just obtaining doing something where without necessarily any end result that might not have any value to anyone even but uh, although it would, it's nice when uh, your creation does have value to others but it's really the ultimate is how to create, create, create uh, not how to possess or earn or um, or uh, or just have, but how to continuously create. What is the step that you're taking towards finding your like meaning or your fulfillment? Well, uh, next week we're heading to Ukraine, and then let's photo, uh, let's do an intense or extensive photo pr uh, project of the of the current state of affairs happening in Ukraine. And then uh, I think from what I'm just seeing now online and, and social media and in the news photographs, and I am partially part-time, or not part-time, part of what I do is photograph. So definitely photography can be of great use and photographs can are very powerful tools 
for multiple reasons. So I feel in this short term, at least, I can be of use when I get to Ukraine. So you say you want Ukraine to take photographs of It's not what I'm hoping to capture, it's how I'm hoping the photographs can be of use to uh, basically to get the West to increase their support for the uh, for Ukraine. And what I mean by that is very simply, por uh, photographs are very powerful and uh, humans see destruction, death, uh, uh, the, uh, the impact of what Russian soldiers are doing. And uh, then they call their politician, uh, their congressmen or elected officials to put pressure on them to uh, increase funding for military expense for Ukraine. And it mostly is done by seeing images of uh, uh, absolute total destruction. So if I can contribute of creating photographs that will get uh, humans to, uh, you know, to put pressure on the elected officials to increase military funding for Ukraine, then I think that could be of great, uh, that would be very satisfying for me to have done. It's very easy to get into Ukraine. You just it, the border is open to anyone. All visas have been cancelled, except of course if you have a Russian passport, then you will not be allowed in. But if you don't, uh, borders are open. Yeah, photographs, I, photographs more than well, photographs and video, but I have seen, photographs can be very very powerful. And uh, I mean, for example, I don't know if you know the story of a photographer who photographs the U Ukrainian uh, uh, or w Western uh, uh, elected officials were using to show what is happening in Ukraine and use it as a, uh, to put pressure on the White House and the Biden administration saying, look, you have to step up uh, uh, America's assistance and another country, other assistance to Ukraine. And it's not from gazillion, tons of articles that were written. It's not from tons of tweets. It's one photograph that shows, wow, we, we, have, to, we have to help Ukraine. So I'm a proponent of, of photographing and really showing what's happening because photographs are powerful tools. Where are you from? Uh, originally uh, born in uh, Russia, uh, in USSR, when it exists in Moscow. But that was a long time ago, long, 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 long time ago I came to you. Yeah. Your future is extremely bright. In fact, I think Ukraine's future in general is very bright. After this war, the amount of support, investment in the rebuilding process, in, in, in uh, just uh, re integrating Ukraine and the European Union, in uh, just right now is the hardest moments and some people will not survive. But for the majority, the future is bright. It just hold, hold on for a little bit longer, a few more months, I don't know how long. But uh, I'm very optimistic about Ukraine's uh, future. Really, I honestly am. Oh. Hi, my name is Alyssa. I'm 29 years old and I have anxiety. <laughs> and I deal with it every day. How I deal with it? I don't know. <laughs> no, I think that when I have anxiety, a lot of it, yes, is breathing, but also I a thing that does help me that may not help a lot of people, but is I think of the end of the anxiety. When I'm ever whenever I'm having an anxiety attack, I think about the positives in my life. I like to name seven like positive things that happen in my day. Even if it was I got to eat lunch today, because some people don't get to eat lunch. So I think about, I name seven positive things that happen in my day. And then also I think about this is gonna pass and maybe in an hour, maybe in eight hours. But when it passes, I'll get through it and I'll feel better about getting through it. So I just think about the end of my anxiety attack and that's usually kind of like, it kind of helps me calm down a little bit. And if it doesn't, I take a nap. I smoke a little weed and I take a nap. <laughs> and that's how I got through it. But I think the best thing to do is list 
seven positive, like list at least three positive things that have happened to you in your day. And like I said, it could be the littlest thing and you'll see how much that changes and how much that helps. And you'll for, force a smile and forcing a smile helps so much. Give me three positive things. Well, I had the sickest shrimp burrito bowl from Taco Mix at Industry City, 254 36th Street. Um, it was delicious. I had amazing clients today. I did some great haircuts, and they left happy. As long as they left happy, I'm happy. Come on through. <laughs> Yeah, so those are my, I think I named like four. So those are my positive things. They left happy, I'm happy. And I don't have to stress about it because this is my last day of work. And when I have a client that's not happy, the, four day, the three or four days that I'm off, I'm stressing. Everybody left happy, I'm happy. I have nothing to stress about. That's good. Yeah, now, so that's it. Did you find yourself going into here if you wanted to do Oh, totally. Like, just make somebody feel better about themselves. Makes, give them the hair they've always wanted, don't know how to explain. You know, I love when I can, when somebody comes into my chair and I give them what they want and they say, oh my God, this is exactly what I've wanted, but I never knew how to ask for it. And you did it. I'm like, somebody did I. One of my, one of my clients was like, you're a magician. And I was like, you know, I'm not, but I try. I'm definitely not, but I definitely try, and thank you for that. So that definitely inspires me. Do you ever get, like, to a space where you kind of, like, experiment with your clients a little bit? Of course, yeah. but it's a client that I've had for a while that trusts me, and I trust them. I love a client that comes in my chair and just says, do whatever you want. You know? You sit there and you kind of consult about do whatever you want, what that means to them, and what it would mean to me and you kind of work around that, but that's the best. It's, it's great when that happens. Yeah, so I love that. Artistic freedom. Exactly, I love it. I'm like, hmm. She's got the boss right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Spinny stairs. Oh, I like these things, oh, clocks. What's going on in your mind? Oh, I'm here in Japantown. I'm a huge fan of anime and just Japan in general. So I'm here to check out the neighborhood to see what everything is like. What about Japan? Got you into Japan? I think they know how to tell a storyline in the way that the U.S. is too scared to tell a storyline. They have so many barriers in mind, but when I look at an anime or a Japanese story, I feel like an authentic way of looking at humanity in a way that I've never experienced it before. So if I think about Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, or those kind of cartoons growing up, they didn't even feel like cartoons because I'm learning life lessons in a way that TV shows have never taught me growing up before. So you think that they have more of like a spiritual teaching, and in the Western world we got more just entertainment? I feel like the spirituality is there no matter where you are, but you choose to define where the spirituality is and what you do. So when I watch these shows, yeah, I think the spirituality is there. I don't think that's the intent, but I see it there and I follow it in the way that other people look at it and they go against it. I think it's a personal choice. Um, what is one of the greatest lessons that you learn? In these shows? One of the greatest lessons I learned is to trust the friends around you. Like your friends are gonna be there to support you. They're gonna be there to guide you and they will be there after all the turmoil of what your life is. So trust in your friends because they're gonna guide you. Yeah, all right. Is there another lesson that you, or something that you live by from the show? The other lesson that I left by and that I go by is trust your gut, trust what's inside your heart because you're the only one to tell you no. If you feel like you need to do something, do it and live that experience. Why not? What is something that you need to do? That I need to do? Yeah, that you didn't do yet. I need to trust my own advice and go on and do what I want to do. What is that? That's my phone. Someone's ringing. Isn't that crazy? 
My friends are calling me right now. I think I need to go. I think I. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Hello? Where are you? I'm outside being recorded. You're where? I'm outside being recorded. By who? A random stranger. The point is, I'm gonna go meet you guys because I gotta live my life, right? <laughs> that is exactly what we're doing. We're living our life. We're doing what we need to do in the moment because why would you not do it in the moment? Okay. Do not let your... Oh, sorry, Jazz. I know you're still here on the phone. But I I'm speaking truth to the camera. The truth is do not stop yourself from living your life. Do what you feel you need to do and go on and live your life because what else is there? Hey, and I'm going to go meet them for dinner. Uh, See you for dinner right now. Good box, good box. Oh, oh, you just hung up on it? I did. Because I got to go have dinner with them. They're in there. What are you about to get? Huh? What are you about to eat? Uh, some Japanese food. Duh. Why not? Yeah. Why not? All right. Do you know what you're going to order? I don't know what I'm going to order yet. I got to see the menu. You better enjoy it. I will enjoy I it. Watch some anime. What should I start with? You should, if you haven't seen Demon Slayer, start with that. It's an amazing, it's not just an amazing story, but the animation is great. Yeah. If, you're trying to, if you're trying to do old school, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, that's where it's at. Were you you got to do phone? that kind of stuff. That was you? No, uh, no. no. Was She's one of them. She's one oh. of them. But um, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, those are in the past, but to date. Yeah. Demon Slayer. What's Demon that? Slayer. What's it. that? You heard it. Yeah, you got it. So I'm just going to point the camera at me and I hope that it picks something up. But <laughs> I guess I'm going to do some more vlogging right now. Um, just having fun, baby. This is a thing called life. You know?